when making applications date picker allows us to easily choose dates okay so normally you can either use a date picker dialog or like we're going to do we can use a bottom sheet to display our date picker so right here you can see this of course is my date picker right here okay so you can easily scroll through the date the day actually the month as well as the year and then keep pick your date so if you pick it you can see we're able to show it in a snack bar now this is what we're going to look at today basically a date picker dialogue how not really a dialogue but a bottom sheet we're using it of course to pick our dates okay you can see it's actually beautiful so it allows us to easily pick date we basically scroll right here and then pick whatever we want so this of course is in the portrait mode let's also look at it in the landscape mode so for the landscape here we go we choose click choose button then of course we come right here we're able to scroll through our dates and then pick the date that we desire okay so this is it right here we can easily go ahead and pick our dates yeah so this is what we're going to look at let's get started okay so first and foremost we're going to start by creating a flutter application so choose the flutter application of course you can see we have three options we can either create an app a plugin or a package okay so if you are targeting we're building we're targeting the end users then that of course means we're going to create an application so choose the flat application then of course go to next right here you can see we can type our app name now the your app name of course there is no space you don't uh of course it has to be in lowercase letters and then you cannot include um space right here okay it's just a single word then of course if android studio hasn't detected your path then you go ahead and include your sdk path okay flutter is actually a framework so we have to include its framework um it's sdk okay it's path the path to the sdk and then of course the your project location then a small description which you can then change later on if you like so this is my domain we're going to click finish to get started okay so this is our ide right here so you can see this is our project structure now flutter is a framework that allows you to build apps either for ios or android okay so in this case we're going to uh, only compile it for android so what we're going to do right here we're interested in two files this main dot dot as well as the pubspec.yml so let's come start with the pubspec.yml this is how we add our dependencies so in this case we're going to make use of uh these dependencies we're going to have our cupertino icons you can see this of course is an sdk level dependency we really don't fetch it from online but is actually included in the flutter sdk then we also have the flutter date picker so flutter date picker is a third party library that we're going to use now all you have to do is just include it right here okay so include it right here as well as the version and then you click packages get and android studio is going to fetch for us the particular uh flutter date picker and add it to our project so that's it that's all you need to do under the pubspec.yml let's now move over to our main dot dot file so the next thing we come over to our main dot dot right here okay so flutter is a framework for building android applications using that programming language now that is a statically typed language it was developed by google around six or seven years ago and it's also purely object oriented so let's see how to work with this beautiful language first of course in that if you're importing your packages you use the import keyword just like in java so like in this case you're saying we're importing material dot dot as well as the flutter dot picker dot dot now remember we've actually added material dot dot is included in the flutter package but also we've included the flutter dot picker now flutter dot picker we've included it right here in our pub spec tutorial okay is a third party library you can see it right here so we are getting our flutter dot picker dot dot from that particular package which we've added to our project 
Then of course we come create our class. Now class my app. This is going to represent our application. You can see it's deriving from the stateless widget. So stateless widget is basically a widget that doesn't have a mutable state. Now there are two normally two types of widget stateless widget as well as the stateful widget. So in this case our this widget right here my app is going to represent our full application okay so we are not going to have any state application wide state so that's why you are using the stateless widget so the moment you derive from actually a widget you have to override at least this build method right here given that is an abstract method okay so we derive from it and as you can see we are passing in a build context now what will we return well we need to return a widget for that particular class in this case i'll return material app so material app of course is also a widget will specify its theme using the theme data right here and then you can change the primary color if you like okay so what will be the home the home will be this particular home okay so we're going to create a class called home so this right here we're passing in our home constructor right here we're instantiating the home and then assigning it to the home so it's a class that you're going to create in a short while let's come uh, create it so class home but of course this home also needs to be a widget so we make it derive from the stateful widget now as opposed to the stateless widget a stateful widget actually has a mutable state okay so we'll make this particular uh, home derived from the stateful widget. This means this is going to be able to maintain a state, okay, which can actually be changed in the course of the runtime of the application. Okay, now the moment we derive from the stateful widget, we have to override at least one method right here, the create state. So this create state, we've actually condensed it using the fat arrow notation into a single statement now is going to return for us what we are calling a home state so this home state right here is actually the state okay remember i've said that this particular widget which is our home it will have a mutable state now that state we need to specify it right here as the return type of the create state create state is a method we were reading but we have to give it of course our own uh, state right here okay now this create set will create for us the mutable set for this particular widget okay yeah which is our home widget now we come right here we go come and then create that particular home state now if we talk about state this of course is the information which of course can be read as synchronous synchronously when a widget is being built okay it's basically the state of our application the state can that state can actually be changed in the course of the lifetime of our app so here is our state home state however to actually make it into a state we have to derive from the state so we may extend the state right here now our generic parameter will be the home so this still will require us to go ahead and then uh, implement of course uh, the build method okay state with build which we'll do later on for now we're going to have a global key right here of generic type scaffold state we're going to instantiate it and then assign it to this scaffold key so global key this is actually an object that will allow us to create a key which is unique across the entire um app so we'll see how to use it later on and then we come right here create our callback I'm calling it the show bottom sheet callback okay so we're using the void callback as the type and this basically is a signature of callbacks which of course have no arguments and then will return for us no data so that will be our sh uh, sh sh we're going to hold of course our show bottom sheet callback right here okay yeah so we'll also have a boolean value a boolean variable that we're calling show that picker by default i have it set to false then we come i'm going to override the init state init state is a method that will be called when our object is inserted into the tree so right here we're going to invoke the init state of the superclass 
the superclass of this particular home state is of course the state class okay so in the init state we're going to go ahead and then uh, assign our show bottom sheet so we come show bottom sheet callback right here we're going to assign it to this show bottom sheet so show bottom sheet is a method that will define in a short while so before that one let's come create of course a method that you are calling snack bar now by the way if you see us uh, prepending a method or a variable with the underscore that means that that particular method or variable is private to this particular library now library if we talk about a library in that we basically means the whole of this project okay so it's it's uh private to this like this right here is a private method that's why we are prefixing it with the underscore okay now this method snack bar is going to receive a text which will be shown okay so we're going to come scaffold key which is our global uh, key we're going to retrieve its current state property now this will then allow us to invoke the show snack bar so we invoke the show snack bar and then we're going to pass in of course our snack bar and then pass the content to our snack bar okay now that is our snack bar method having done that one we're going to come and then now create our show bottom sheet so we come show bottom sheet still we're prepending it with the underscore given that it's a private method so we'll come right here we're going to first uh, invoke the set state okay so this will notify for us it will notify the framework that the internal state of this particular object has changed the internal state of this particular home state so it's subject when it changes right here when we invoke the show bottom sheet we're going to invoke the set state which will tell the framework that we've actually modified the state uh, for the object of this particular class okay yeah and then what are we going to do we're going to assign our show bottom sheet callback to null Having done that one, we're going to come and then scaffold key, okay, dot current state. Again, we invoke the current state property and then invoke the show bottom sheet right here, which should show. By the way, we're going to be showing a date picker in this particular bottom sheet, okay, in our bottom sheet. So we're going to return date of birth, then the key, we specify our date of birth key, then of course the set date we uh, specify our set date of birth and then uh, we come right here on closed and then of course when complete so this is what we're going to do we're going to check if our state is mounted so if mounted now this mounted is a method that is defined in the state class okay it will return for us a boolean value that boolean value will show us whether the state of object whether, whether this particular state object is currently in our tree so we check if it's mounted if it returns true then we're going to invoke the state uh, the set state method again to tell the framework that the internal state of our object has actually changed and then we're going to re-enable our button so show bottom sheet callback equal to show bottom sheet then let's come define the set date of birth which we invoked right here you can see okay so set date of birth by the way remember in Kotlin Kotlin is a purely object oriented language this means that even functions and methods all variables as well as functions and methods all of those are objects okay so you can also assign functions or methods just the way you can assign ordinary variables yeah we can create this method is going to be private of course void is what it returns then navigator.of then we pass in context our build context we're going to invoke our snack bar right here so snack bar in this particular case is going to show for us um we want to show for us of course what the user has selected okay so we're going to inject them or interpolate them we use the string interpolation right here so you can see we're getting date of birth and then 
we're interpolating it right here and then we also come we also get the uh, year of birth we also interpolate it right here so you can see we're using the string interpolator basically this dollar sign followed by the curly brace and then we can write our expression within it and insert it just within of course uh, the quotation marks so that will do for us that will show for us the date and year of birth in our snack bar then of course lastly we come and then override the build method so build method we have to override it of course even um if we extend a state right here okay it's actually an abstract method we have to go ahead over read it so we come we're going to return a scaffold now scaffold is a special class that allow us to uh, define of course the basic visual layout of an application okay so we come right here scaffold and then we pass in the key and then the app bar now basically it allows us to define the basic uh the visual layout of an app for example you can see we have the app bar right here and we have our key which of course we assign it to a scaffold key then of course our app bar which is our application bar or our tool bar if you like we can set its background color and then we can come here and set the text okay yeah that is the title which will be shown of course in the app bar then of course the body we specify the body i'm going to come and then instantiate container right here i'm going to pass the padding so we pass the padding so aging says that all we're going to have all around a padding of 10 dp then of course the alignment will be at the top center then we're going to have a button a raised button this button will have this particular color and then this is the text it will have choose date and then when you press it what are we going to do we're going to show bottom sheet so that's what we're doing well we exit our home state class we come over and then create our main method now these are top level main method right here so void main then we use the shut um fat arrow notation also to write it of course in a single line and then invoke the run app then we pass in the instance of our my app that's all we need to do guys if you want to run the project make sure that your device is up and running you will see it right here now alternatively if you are unable to see it then you want to make sure that your adb is running okay and read the bug bridge now if still that does not work then what you can actually do is that you can navigate over to a project okay so just navigate over to the project where you have your project and then you can build it from the command line for example in this case i have my project right here so i'm going to have my project mr the time picker so we can actually build it from the command line i'll just get bash right here and then you can also navigate over using just the command line for windows and then type this one flutter.bat build apk this is going to build your apk and then you can then drag that apk and then install it in your device you find the apk right here within the outputs okay so here you'll find it you can then drag it to your device does it like the video make sure you guys subscribe to our channel program users tv we'll have the source code in our website camposha.info and if you have any question you can leave it in the comment box and if you haven't subscribed please do so take care i'll catch you in the next class